So here's an interesting story. You all heard about Labour U-turning on their only good policy, the £28 billion green investment plan. Now, an interesting development was that Rachel Reeves took a £10,000 donation from Lord Donoghue. Now, who is this guy? Lord Donoghue, a Labour peer, is a former chairman of Global Warming Policy Foundation, a think tank founded by former Conservative Chancellor Nigel Lawson to examine the economics of climate change. GWPF publishes briefing papers that question climate reports by bodies such as the Met's office and the United Nations' IPCC Climate Science Group. Now, a Labour source said, and I quote, Lord Donoghue is a long-standing friend of Rachel's and Labour peer. She does not share his views on climate change and has spoken of her determination to be Britain's first Green Chancellor. Now, you can drop the pretense of being the first Green Chancellor because you've U-turned on the £28 billion a year pro-green policy. So there's no evidence to suggest that Rachel Reeves will be any more pro-green than any other chancellor. Now, what you need to know about money and politics is donors don't often give due to the kindness of their hearts. They expect a return. That's why so many former Tory donors have jumped ship to the Labour Party. They know Labour are going to win. They know that Labour are going to be in government and want to influence policy. I mean, Liz Kendall literally admitted on TV that they ditched their corporation tax rise because they were literally told to do so by their donors. I'm not being hyperbolic here. She literally said the quiet part out loud. I covered it a few weeks ago. Definitely go check it out. But this begs the question, was Rachel Reeves paid off? I think that's a fair question given these facts, right? Um, Now, there's two scenarios. One, Rachel Reeves was paid off. The £10,000 donation from Lord Donoghue made them drop this, uh, you know, Lord Donoghue, a working for a climate sceptic think tank. Obviously, you're going to be a climate sceptic yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't work for this think tank. Gives 10 grand to Rachel Reeves, and now they suddenly U-turn on their pro-green policy. The second scenario is the original reason, and now the Labour Party didn't outright and admit this, but essentially there were briefings in the media from insider sources that suggested that they were scared about the media and Tory attacks. Look, they have created this narrative, the Labour Party that is, um, that they want to look economically competent and essentially fiscally conservative and are worried that the 28 billion figure would be a tax. Rishi Sunak would say, oh, the 28 billion pounds, that's that's an eye-watering sum. They cannot be trusted on the economy. And they they were worried it would smash that narrative. Now, I personally believe that is the case, and I don't think that Reeves was paid off. I think Keir Starmer, Rachel Reeves, and the rest of Lotto have no spine, no principles, and essentially they are always predisposed to gravitate towards neoliberal austerity politics. They are establishment politicians and the establishment politics today is neoliberalism and austerity. I mean, they sort of go hand in hand. People like Starmer and Reeves have to be dragged kicking and screaming to put them down the right path of investment. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn didn't because he believed in anti-austerity, but these guys don't. So I think that a big investment policy like the Green Investment Plan simply just, they didn't take that much pressure to crumble. Um, And I'm not going to lie, I'm surprised they supported this policy in the first place. And I'm sure they were pressured from within. But of course, I never thought they would stick to it. And many of us were proven right. Now, there's a clip of Faisal Islam asking Reeves about this U-turn. But this specific question, I have been waiting and waiting for the mainstream media to point this out. And it's an incredibly obvious point. And they finally did. So we'll watch this clip and then I'm going to break it down for you. It's the first time we've got to speak to you since the abandonment of the of your own plan, the 28 billion last year. Can you just clarify the point about that plan, as I understood it, was that this was your plan for growth and that now you're not doing it. Where is your plan for growth? You're saying you can't afford it, but where's the growth going to come from? On the um, uh, Green Prosperity Plan, I set out in my speech today how the National Wealth Fund and GB Energy will drive uh, growth in our economy, uh, investment alongside the private sector and the industries of the future. And I think it was welcome last week that so many businesses said that what is needed to drive investment in these industries is that joint investment and reforms of the planning system, which Labour are committed to, to get Britain building again. So essentially, you have a, I think, a comprehensive, cohesive pro-growth plan from this £28 billion pledge. And now she's U-turned on it. Her response was, oh, I guess some growth is going to come from the private sector and the market. 
And what people need to understand is that this is a calamitous U-turn. It's not just a U-turn on a policy. This is a U-turn, I think, of Rachel Reeves, her entire shattered chance to career, because she's always been banging on about growth, growth, growth. Then they finally come out with a policy, which is a real pro-growth policy, which is the £28 billion uh, green investment plan. It's good because it invests in high-quality jobs, High quality jobs creates more economic activity, more tax receipts. They invest in infrastructure, which is good for the local area, local economies. And even if, if some of that infrastructure is working with um, commercial projects, again, that's consumers um, ramping up economic um, activity. It's a really good plan. But the thing is, the private sector is actually quite bad at investment. I mean, let's look at the railways, for example. They've Half of it is essentially being nationalised under this government, and the Tories hate nationalisation, but they had to do it because the railways have been de-invested in. A really good business practice is essentially de-invest in your own company, or put the least amount of investment as you can possibly get away with, and also have really expensive rail fares. I mean, that's good for company policy because that increases your profits, right? We've got shoddy trains, as we all know, and they never turn up. They're they're just terrible. You're you can't get a seat. Yet the, the, the price of the tickets are so disgustingly expensive. So that's a good business practice, but it's bad for public policy. And the problem with the private sector is they're very good at investing in their own profits, um, in their own companies, but there is no positive economic output when it comes to private investment or very little of it. So when you use the state to invest, that has a great multiplier effect. Whereas the private sector doesn't necessarily do that because all the profits from companies go to shareholders, go to fat wages for CEOs. Some of it is is reinvested into the company, which is good. Other times it's invested into other business ventures, which is essentially another way of generating more profit. And then the money is also stashed in tax havens and paying no taxes or little taxes or the money is spent on lobbying governments to essentially change public policy that makes it favourable for corporations. To put this in simple terms, if you want something done, you do it yourself. So Rachel Reeves is going to be a chancellor. She is in charge of the public finance. She has the power to use the state to invest heavily in this country, whereas the state obviously doesn't have control over the private sector. Essentially, the private sector doesn't guarantee investment. You kind of, I mean, you can change certain policies that may tinker around the edges, but nothing of real substance. And that is a problem. So this U-turn was catastrophic because she went from, I think, a radical, comprehensive growth plan to, I don't really have a plan at all. And this isn't being talked about enough. Now, the Financial Times described everything as shitification. It's a new label they've come up with, one of the writers did, which is essentially everything is shit, because it is. After 40 years of neoliberalism, we have crumbling infrastructure. Nothing works. This country is becoming a wasteland. And we radically need investment. Now, I will hold my hands up because a few weeks ago, I claimed that Rachel Rees was economically illiterate. She had no clue about the economy. I retract that statement. Uh, the reason why is because she used to work for the Bank of England. And if you work for the Bank of England, you know full well that we are very lucky with our with our state. We are incredibly lucky that we have the Bank of England because, no, it's not um, independent, as some people say. The Bank of England is like a really good friend, right? Uh, they're not going to come knocking on your door asking for repayments. Um, essentially, we have the Bank of England to fund whatever we want. So Rachel Reeves couldn't work for the Bank of England and then still believe that our economy is like our personal economies where it's essentially you have a credit card and you have a sum of money and once that's gone, that's gone. That's not how it works. So this rhetoric on not being able to afford things, fiscal rules, that makes it a lie, which is even worse. So no, she's not economically illiterate. She's just lying to us. Why do you think Rachel Reeves U-turned on this policy so easily? Well, one, because she's ideologically a neoliberal. But also, you, when you're someone like Rachel Reeves, you surround yourselves by those who want you to use the private sector rather than state-led investment. They, these people, the captains of industry, will be saying to Rachel Reeves over and over again, no, 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 give us government contracts. We'll do it. We promise we'll give you loads of investment. But they're only doing that because they can make themselves profits and that's it. So there's no point waiting and hoping for the private sector to maybe or most likely not deliver the things we need. We need the government to do it. And this is the issue of climate change. We don't have time to wait. Climate change is the biggest catastrophic event coming our way. We need the state to 
heavily invest and get shit done now rather than waiting for the private sector. But again, Rachel Reeves is ideologically opposed to public good and public investment and she's folded so quickly and now we essentially have uh, a growth plan that is indistinguishable from the Tories, from Liz Truss's economic policy because the right-wing economic method for growth, which I think is bullshit by the way, is cut taxes for the rich, deregulation, hope that wealth trickles down and trickles out. We know it doesn't work. We can feel it. We can see it. And at least the Labour Party had this really good uh, investment policy of we are going to use the state to invest. And now they've scrapped that. And along with that, they've scrapped any semblance of an opposition or uh, a difference of economic policy. And I have no faith in the Labour Party to deliver the things we need delivering because they have copied the Tories on exactly everything. And this latest U-turn demonstrates exactly that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and drop a comment. It's good for the algorithm and I'm interested in what you have to say. If you're not already subscribed, please do and hit the notification bell. You can also support this channel by becoming a member for 99p per month. And if you're feeling a little more generous, then you can support us on Patreon for three or five pounds per month. This channel for a while has been uploading every single day and it's quite a lot of work that is still voluntary and scheduled around my paid work. But I have so much ambition, expect in the future to see more variety in content such as interviews and vox pops. But I want this to be a fully fledged media organisation where not only is this my full time job, but to have multiple people working for Turn Left. I like to see a live show in the future, more content that delves into culture, history and much more. But that can only be done if there's money. So please, if you can, support us in any way that's in your capacity. And thank you to existing members, subscribers and patrons. See you next time.